Hai bala. Hi guys, uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Mohan. Uh, so basically, uh, I have around uh, nine years experience in the market, in the especially in IT industry, uh, and I have uh, one and a half year experience in uh, robotic process automation. Okay. So hi, Venga. Good morning. Good morning, Morgan. Yeah. Sorry for Just the nice. uh, delay. <laughs> no, it's okay. Just now it's kicked back. Okay, 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 no problem. Fine, let's, let's let us go ahead. Okay. I think you're able to see my screen, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, okay. So, today the agenda is like, uh, so we'll talk about what is robotic process automation and uh, basically we have to see what is the advantages and uh, what are the disadvantages where exactly we are using the uh what i'm trying to say can you, can you please mute yourself oh uh, yeah yeah thank you thank you guys okay i'm just basically focused on this what are the opportunities of the robotic process automation and what exactly robotic process automation we have to understand where we have to use the robotic process automation apart from that so, so let me introduce ui path and ui path components and uh, we'll talk about uh, bit orchestrator and i'll show you the orchestrator as well how it is looking like and i will give a small and live demo like how to extract the data from the on windows application so that is the agenda for today so let us kick start this so basically, we have to understand like what is robotic process automation. So when we talk about robotic process automation, we have to understand first of all what is the process. So basically, when we talk about the process, right, we have to understand what is the process first of all. So what is the process? Let's say example, we have invoicing management system on process. So what is the invoicing management system? Basically. I'm just going to talk about the process, robot or bot. Okay, this is the terminology which I'm going to use. So first of all, you have to understand what is a process. The process is nothing but it's an application where exactly on back end they are using that. It's very simple. I'll give one more example here. The process is nothing but, let's say example, invoicing management system is one process that application or that process might have developed with any other language that means that any java dot and whatever it is now this invoicing management system we have pushed into the production okay where the end users are using that let's say example so you, you may be having one company where 10 members are working in it so basically which is where when who is going to process the invoices okay so what basically they are doing I'm going to give the invoices to them, okay? They have a desired system where they have to process the invoices, okay? Where they have to process the invoices and there is to get the invoice number, they're going to push the invoice number in the system. That means an application and they're going to process it and find that they're releasing the invoicing, invoice step. So invoicing is nothing but here, it's a one type of process, okay, where, where, what I'm trying to say that where they're going to process list of invoices. Now process, the same thing we have, now student information system is one process. So what basically student information system is this, 
they are returning the list of stored information. So they are going to push by using the user interface. The user interface is nothing but one application where they are going to process student data entry into their database. That interface might have developed with any language, dot or Java, whatever it is. So I'm getting the list of users uh, information, the student information, and I'm going to push it into what I'm trying to say into the system. And I'm finding when I click on save, obviously what will happen, whatever the data which we're entering into the system, right? That application, right? Automatically push it into the database or employee management system. So we have different types of processes available, like now. I hope you got it. What is the process? The process is one-time environment where the end users are using. Okay. Now, this wherever the end users are using, right? Where I am going to automate the process, I am going to replace the end users. That means that I am going to replace them with the PPO sector. So business process outsourcing. Who is processing my invoices? Or who is processing my store information? Or who is processing my employee information system? But I am going to replace with my Okay, now human with my bot, okay, virtual bot, from the, with the virtual bot, I'm going to process as human this. Okay, so that is called a process. This process, I'm going to automate with different types of tools. The tools is nothing but like we have different types of tools available in the market, UA path, blue prism, automation aware, work fusion, open span, different types, 200 plus, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say, tools are available in the market. But now we have a high a majority of the tools you now we are able to hear in the market is UI path, automation anywhere, blue present the three are high peak in the market nowadays. So by using these tools, I'm going to automate. After automating this process, I'm going to run with my bots. So basically we have to understand what is a bot here. The bot is nothing but one machine, okay, which is going to perform a set of instructions whatever we, we give, give we whatever we given to the bot okay so we, we we simply understand this robotic process is nothing but it is it is going to we are going to automate the business rule based business so by using different types of tools and by using software robots i'm going to process that one i'm going to run the bot very simple here i have given an example like data into the payroll system or entry and business process very simple if you want to do any repetitive task on daily basis let's say example and uh, there's some some folder path i mean I, I used to get list of pdf files on daily basis so what is my job each and every one hour i have to observe that one the location if you get any invoices so make sure that i want i mean I'm, if you get any any pdf files any other documents the documents i have to attach into my mail and i want to send it to the world particular recipients this is my job, but easily I am going to replace with my bot. So bot can do the all, all the operations. So by using different types of tools, so such a way we are going to give instruction to my bot, so that bot is going to perform. So that is called robotic process automation. We are going to process the automation here. I'm not. This is people may be getting confusion, right? So we have selenium testing. So what, what is the selenium automation is also there? What is the selenium automation? Selenium automation is very simple, so which is going to test your application. Now, as for example, you are developing one application. Let's say invoicing management system also you are developing one application. Well, while developing application, you may be using any any technology, .NET or Java, whatever it is. After then, my development, I am going to push it into my testing environment, right? So what there is to do the Selenium the automation testing? They are going to write the scripts. They are pushing different types of inputs to the system, but I am going to validate the, all the like you now that this uh, input. I mean. Whatever I'm giving inputs, this application is validating properly or not. That is what they're validating by using passing different positive or negative scenarios. That is called Selenium testing. Selenium automation, nothing but testing your application, whether it is running or running properly or not. But the process, the robotic process automation, where the run, run, runtime environment is ready, that means that where, I mean, end users are using, where the application was hosted in our production environment. Okay. So where I'm going to replace my end users. So I'm with the, so without end users, right? I'm going to automate this process without end user. I'm going to assign this entire task or process to my virtual robot. So robot is going to pick the inf information from the users and is going to process it and robot is going to release the output. That is what robotic process automation. Okay, basically what is robotic process automation is we are going to simply 
configuration that automate manual and repetitive tasks. So wherever we are doing right repetitive tasks, but I'm going to simply configure it. Okay, we have in robotic process automation, right? We have different types of tools that are available. The, all the tools I don't require to write more number of lines code. I just want to drag and drop it. I just want to set the configuration and just want to run it. That's obviously your application is going to run. Okay. So that is called the configurations that automate manual and repetitive tasks. So whatever we are doing in the invoicing management system, what we are getting, we are getting list of invoices. Okay. After getting invoices, I'm just getting I have a desired application where I'm going to process my invoices. I'm getting invoice. I'm going to push it into that application. I'm going to process. Finally, the output may be a, like no pen or DNA or what I'm trying to say, pay your invoice. So these are the outputs we may be doing that. So what is here? So virtual robots that integrate with existing software. Here, virtual robots is nothing but your bots. Even we don't require the machine. If you, if you have one server where we can create a number of you know, virtual robots from there, I'm able to run my, what I'm trying to say, my process. So this is simply nothing but replication of your desktop application. So not only the desktop application, where we have you know, web application also where we can able to replicate and we can able to automate the process. So robotic process automation is simply, you can say it is a simple, driven by simple rules and business logic. If you have any simple logics or if you have any simple rule-based application where the individuals are performing and repeatedly, where I'm going to replace with my boss and I'm going to perform the operation. That is called what basically robotic process automation is. Then robotic process automation is not what? It is not a human robot. That is what we have to understand here. So this is not a human robot. This is not a physical robot. This is like in a software robot. So very simple. It's a virtual bot. It's a machine. For that machine, I'm going to assign to some tasks. So we have we have a bots are available. I mean instance. So by using that, I'm going to run my jobs. And one more thing is and something that can entirely replace the human node that is not possible. 100 percentage automation cannot be performed because we have different types of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I have some uh, disadvantages of the you know, tool. So here we have any uh, handwritten documents. Just an example, your uh, invoice maybe come up with some handwritten documents. Yes, that can be possible by using optical character recognition that we have a OCR concept, but we cannot have you 100 percentage. Some people may have written a different, different stylish and English, right? So the bot cannot read exactly what they have written. So the, so we should not commit for handwritten documents and free flow text. So what is the free flow text? That means that, so we have in fact one, one area like any label or a text area, they have written some, some text that is called for this invoice, you have to pay 50 percentage of the build amount. Like that, they may be written the free flow text. So free flow text, I can read it, but I cannot understand it here. That, that means that what cannot understand what exactly written in the mission. I mean, to say that in the written in the text box or label or any place, the Excel sheet, whatever it is. That means that I cannot, I cannot read and understand from the mission what cannot understand. If it is a standard format, okay, this guy has to play this this amount. If, if it is even though it is in a free for text in a standard format, yes, I can able to automate those areas also. So, hundred percent is automation cannot achieve since ro robot cannot think. We have uh, the problem is the free for text. I cannot I cannot able to understand. I mean, bot cannot understand. And what I'm trying to say, the next one is handwritten documents. So these are the areas I we cannot do. So that that we cannot able to enter uh, automate entirely. That means 100 percent automation cannot be feasible here. And the sex that is what I'm trying to say here. Something that replaces replicate the human cognitive functions. So what is the cognitive functions here? So basically, so on the fly, human may be think right. Okay, that means the unstructured data. Unstructured data is nothing but what. So we may be getting the data from PDF file, and human can understand on the fly, but bot cannot understand here. So basically, robotic process automation can be achieved through the structured data. So what is the structured data? If you want to perform 
storage information system or employee management system or invoicing management system there should be some input should be uh, you have to get it from the structure format that means the excel sheet will be there excel sheet will contain the list of student information or list of uh, employee information or list of invoices from there i'm going to get it i'm going to push it into your machine so that means that excel is a structured format where you can have the rows and column format so that obviously what will happen where we're going to going to perform the robotic process automation so basically this is called robotic process information guys over to you if you have any queries feel free to ask me uh, actually this was a good intro okay uh, and i have i have a doubt over here uh, yes, the sir. course with which you are going to train us will be supplicated mm -hmm. directly via ua path yeah yeah my uh, directly i'll move on to the ui part only but before that i just want to give some intro on robotic process yeah, right? sure yeah, sure and uh, you're going to uh, give us training on this level what level it is since i have already taken a course on this ui path academy uh, mm -hmm. i have completed level 1 training and there i i think there are two more trainings that is level 2 after completing the level 2 uh, i think they are providing some orchestra orchestra training or something orchestra, i don't know yes. i yes, i yes, really yes. don't know about that so my, my, I, have, my, uh, yeah, I think i have to pay for i think i have to pay for that uh, that alone here mm -hmm. do i get that certification to around this yes so here uh, my course content would be like you no know, i'm going to start with the basics and i'm going to end with orchestrator bot processing the so completely and i have to start from scratching and i have to cover all the topics from the ui path and advanced level training in the sense how we are going to use the common methodologies apart from this uh, apart from this method um, concept from ui path what is the basic stuff which we are going to while while designing the framework what are the concept which we are going to use it that i'm going to cover so basically at the end of the session i'm going to run the bot from the orchestrator the orchestrator i'm going to completely talk about it Here the course is uh, not meaning like not completing the certification. Got it, Bala? Ah uh, yes, I got it. Uh, but but <laughs> what's my question is, uh, after this demo, do I get a clear? I'll be getting a clear idea on this orchestrator. Uh, my question is, so do I get certification directly from UI Path for this uh, courses which has been conducted by ITAS Technologies? Yes, definitely orchestrator. I think after conducting my class, that you can clear that uh, orchestrator class even. Okay, you will be arranging that uh, uh, courses directly with the uh, UiPath Academy after this, right? Yes, directly I'll be going the uh, cl directly classes. I'm going to cover my concepts. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. We we'll just move on with this uh, training. Yes. So other guys, do you have any queries? Feel free to ask me, or else I'm just move on to the next one. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, Bala, Bala, Bala. I have one question. Yeah. So, yes. Vengadia, we have a different tools in uh, in the market for uh, autom. I mean, for uh, RPA. Okay, uh, Blue Prism, A and UI Path. And what is the uniqueness of UI UI Path, and uh, what are the maximum Areas we can touch in terms of automation in UI path. For example, some of them is not possible in AA. Some of them is not possible in B BP. I mean Blue Prism. Similarly, what are the not possibilities there in UI, and what are the strong area in UI? I mean overall uh, view of on this stuff. Yeah, we get. We get. Uh, Because uh, we get one requirement. The requirement has got ten, uh, the sequence of steps, ten steps. Mm -hmm. So all ten of them is absolutely possible in UI path. Some of them may be not possible. Mm -hmm. Now this is not possible in UI path. So first so we should be in the position to understand this is possible, this is not possible in UI path. As a developer, I should give update to my management. Yes, definitely. so uh the i mean not possible things right uh, 
uh, by using UiPath, I can able to, first thing is the feasible things, let us talk about the feasible things. Mm. We can automate any type of web application, Windows application, and mainframes and SAP oriented. So whatever type it is, it is a web or Windows, I can able to automate it. And the problem is here, where I can, where I'm not able to automate in the sense, we have to uh, check whether the application has exact is this content the selectors or not the selectors are nothing but i have to you know scrap the elements from the ui right okay that means that if it doesn't contain any selectors i cannot able to automate over that first and first and foremost thing then there are there are some cases right that application which contain a single selector where i can where it's difficult to extract the data that means that there is a one area first thing the second thing is okay the i mean the unstructured data, wherever the data which contains unstructured information, like a PDF. If we want to read the data from PDF, from the PDF we have to form, I mean, to say that, like, you no, know, process some applications or something where that is not possible with UI part. Okay. So the next one is there are some cases that we may hand it in documents. Okay. You, you may be getting a list of invoices or list of you no know, other information in the form of handwritten documents with the scanned copies. Yes, that is where I'm not able to process. 100% is automated. We cannot be able to do that. So, and one more thing, there are like a free flow text, anything, any areas, any application which contains free flow text. So based on that, we have to determine the process. That means that where we require a cognitive process, right? We have to understand that. It is called unstructured information is there. So basically, so I just want to um, read this and I have to find that, that decision, right? That, cannot be possible by using the uh, UI path. I mean, these are the basically, right, disadvantage series in the UI path studio. Am I uh, answer your question now, uh, Angus? Yes, yes, uh, Mohan. But one more, one more last question on this for me. Okay. Um, yeah. For example, I'm a VB code. I'm a VB developer. Okay. Visual Basics. See, mm -hmm. I I do some regular tasks with the applications called uh, Outlook, Excel, and uh, mm -hmm. Access and SharePoint. Okay. So, all this automate. I mean, uh, regular work which I can do bit and pieces using the VB Code, interacting with the Outlook, uh, going to the particular folder or subfolder, monitoring the mails. If any mail comes, picks up the content and find the string if string is there i'll just mark the mail to read mode and take the content and put it in the sharepoint it's a kind of uh, you know uh, steps i do regularly yes. which i have done automated using the vb script so okay. similar kind of uh, support uh, will be having from the yes. ui part that mean the feasibility point of view i'm asking yeah whatever you did the same thing we have done it okay yeah. so basically because i came I to know i came to know in automation anywhere Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot, uh, you know, um, we cannot talk to the generic email ID in the Outlook. You know, in the in a project, if you are working uh, for three projects, mm -hmm. your inbox will be there, and uh, each portfolio uh, generic inbox will. So there will be four inboxes on your Outlook. Mm -hmm. So the EAA, which can talk only with the with your individual inbox the generic inbox it cannot uh, you know uh, communicate so that's a drawback is there so whichever mail comes into the generic uh, folder inbox we cannot uh, take i mean we cannot uh, scan and uh, do further tasks so similar yeah. kind of uh, disadvantages we have in ui path or uh, ui path is capable of handling any number of inboxes on the outlook the inbox is something but which we are going to create the folders on the right subfolders like that, right? Subfolder so <laughs> every every project will have a separate uh, inbox under which there will be number of subfolders. Yeah, because we done like no uh, I'm just creating one folder where I'm just going to I have I, I used to return one rule called I'm going to push it into the data, I mean mails into the particular folder. From there, right, my robot is going to pick the data and it's going to convert and it's going to push it into different types of environments. Hmm. But what is, whatever you say, which if you have any different types of more than one inputs, right, that I have to check actually, Bala. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, Yangat, and this is a new scenario which I'm facing, but 
folders and if you want to retrieve i can able to retrieve the data from the folder or subfolders where you can create mm -hmm. your own from there i can able to read the data yes i can able to read the data and i can pass it and find we can mm -hmm. push it into different environment that is feasible but i don't get it. okay okay Okay. But uh, that, what do you think? See, we have a different in inboxes, right? That uh, I just want to check. Definitely, okay. I'll get back to this one now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Because Thank without, uh, I, I should not give the false information. Let, mm. let me check if we have more than one inboxes, like a generic inbox folders, or mm. can you yeah. read the data from the UI part? Definitely, okay. I'll get back to yeah. sure, sure. Any other in, uh, queries, guys? No, not from my side. Okay, guys. Okay. So, I just want to talk about few things here. Right? That is what so far we discussed. Who is processing my work behind this, right? So there is an operation team is sitting at background. Who is going to process our things? Like uh, you are, uh, you are submitting invoices, are you submitting some claims, are you submitting for some uh, information, whatever? So submit some tickets. Okay, you are generating one ticket where they're going to how they're going to perform. So basically, this is a background team where they're going to process the list of you no know, thing, and whatever we requested over the phone or over the mail or over the uh, I mean something. So they are going to sitting at the background. They are processing our uh, that is called our work. It is called business process uh, BPO sector. Okay, business process outsourcing. If you could see here, sample automation architectures. So whatever the an automation, which is going to follow the same thing over here. See, this is the existing operation team here. The basically what they are going to do, they are interacting with the mission and they're able to perform different types of application. Okay. Let's say example, this is the core enterprise banking application. So this team, if you were raise one ticket or if you raise one if you, if you raise one request. So basically, they are going to interact with the multiple applications and finally they get back to your output, like uh, in the form of an Excel sheet or something else. Okay, this is called existing process. I'm sorry. So this is called existing process. After automating this one, right, if you could see this is my virtual robot or course. That means that I have a virtual robot environment where robots can interact with the directly this desktop and interact with the different types of application. And finally, they are going to so, so the, um, they are going to save the data into our no RPA database. That means that if I am dealing with UI Pass Studio, where I can store the data into different types of the databases. That means that if you have SQL Server or Oracle or whatever it may be, UI Pass has you no know, strategy to interact with more than applications. Okay, this is how you are after before implementing the automation. This is how your flow of the structure or architecture would be like this. After humans, right here, I am going to replace my virtual robot. That is the virtual machines I am going to replace with all, and I am going to perform the operation how the existing ops team is working. The same thing I am going to process. So by using so robots here. So that is called. So after implementing and before implementing, this is how we work. The architecture would be like this. So simple here. Instead of this humans, I am going to replace with this. Okay. So why basically you require here RPA database? That is what we have to you know. One thing we have to understand. As the example, as a human, what his guys to do? He is getting this stuff invoices. He is going to perform with an application. After end of the day, okay, he is going to send one report to the their management in the form of Excel, right? In the form of XML, he has to send the status of the, all the invoices, like this invoice number one. What is the state? Whether they paid or not. Invoice number two, what is that state that is denied or not? Something. So here, right, I just uh, you know, human so basically is entering the manually and is finally sending at the end of the day, he is going to send mail to the you know, respect to the team members. The same thing, I just want to do this operation. How we are going to do so my bot is performing one invoice. So by using track with multiple application or any banking applications, okay. After the completing that transaction, it has to update the data into database, like you no. Know, what is the status on the first one? I mean, first uh, invoice or first uh, transaction? It is going to write it into all the, you know, what I'm trying to say, the transaction data into Excel sheet. At the end of the transaction, so at the end of the day, so bot is going to pick the data from the database and it's going to convert it to Excel sheet. This Excel sheet is going to attach into your mail and which is going to send it to the respective recipients. That is what we require RPA database here. From here, I'm able to perform all the operations. This is how your sample automation architecture would be 
in real time scenarios. Any queries here? Yes, uh, I have actually. You are saying this wish, uh, virtual robot, right? It was. Yes. It, it means you will be having some PC or something like that. Yes, a virtual As some desktop. Right? Oh, desktop. Yes. desktop. Uh, it, it it would be some desktop, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, instead of a processor, you will be placing some desktop, and that desktop will be provided. That desktop will be managing multiple applications, and which are used by humans, and it would be automated, right? Yeah, exactly right, Bala. I have a just. Uh, I have a question over here. Uh, mm -hmm. You are, in sense, you are going to automate and web web-based application. Uh, mm -hmm. This will be getting by elements. Or how it would be automated? UI elements. UI elements. Yes, exactly. UI elements. Yeah, I'm okay. going to interact with UI elements. So okay. I have a different types of activities where I'm going to interact with my, you know, different types of UI elements from this screen. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. We'll just go on with this training. Any queries, guys? Okay. I'm just move on to the next slide. So here, no pass. Yeah, yeah. We go ahead, please. And come back to the previous time. Yeah. yeah um, so, uh, in the sense you said uh, the the robot will uh, store all the pro I mean invoices it has been done into the database of RPA. Yeah. So should it create a a table or column according to the transaction it does perform, or or it just like a, a kind of file it will be stored in the database? Okay. Okay. Fine. Good. So before you know processing your bot, right? Uh, so make sure that we have to create one table in the respective database. So we have to okay. create database. We have to create the table. So in so in the right while transaction the bot, right? So I just write one query here. So after all the you know uh, transaction information, I'm going to push it into one data table. From there, I'm going to push it into the respective columns in the database. And dynamically, will not create table here. And dynamically, I'm the database will not create here. So before make sure that we have to create a manually, we have to create one table and we have to create a database. So where we have to write the query to uh, store our transaction information to the database. So, so that, that means uh, according to the uh, invoice uh, details, we have to create the table in the database. For example, the required 10 columns, bill number, party name, all these details. Accordingly, we should create the table in the uh, database. Right. So that means that yeah, whatever you're sending report to your uh, respective team, right? So right. what are the columns which we are creating over there? Like, you no, know, what is the invoice number? Okay, what is the status on the invoice? Who is performer that invoice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the finally like? What time you started? What time you ended? So basically, so typically, is, typically, how do we store the details in the database? So basically, right? Yes. Okay. Because at the end of the day, I want to send the report. Or if you want to know like, the past 10 days transaction or for last 20 days transaction or last one month transaction, you can easily so, get it from the database, right? So that means that means for every process automation, uh, before we start doing the automation, we should understand number of fields that we are going to interact. Accordingly, first you'll have to have the table in the database, right? Exactly, exactly. The same thing, how you are, so let's say, example, you are performing one task, okay? After you perform your task, so what is the status you are going to say, send the status report to your manager, right? So, how okay. where, where you, you're going to add different types of columns? What is the task I have started? When did, when, did, when did they start? When did they complete? How many hours it has taken to perform this operation? Who has done this? Okay, maybe you're, you're sending your team information, right? Where you have to mention who has done on this task. So, same thing, okay. very simple. I just want to create one report generation, yes. Okay, so here one more question I have. See, uh, anyway, this database is going to be the the common asset for multiple bots, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so for each bot performs an individual task. So each bot must have one table according to the no, uh, fields no. that it, it performs. No, I don't want a separate tables here because uh, all the tables here I can filter it by you know by bot wise, right? All the information. And I'm going to store it to the single table. From there, I'm going to retrieve the data based on the bot. Let's say, example, we have 10 bots. Anyway, I'm writing the bot name here, right, in the database. So you can filter it by based on the bot name, right? I don't require to create more than tables so based on the bot here. Got it, Tarangit? 
So only one table will be there for multiple bots. Yes, that is what we do. Okay. We don't require right. So what is the bot one? Anyway, I can filter it. I can easily write the query in from the database, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I'm just move on to the next slide. So very simple here. Process then manually versus RPA. So this is, as, I mean, as we discussed in the previous slide, this is a humans, okay, where they're going to interact with, you know, different types of applications. It may be web or Windows or it's a mainframe or it's a SAP or inter application. So this is what they're interacting with the multiple applications here and coming to after automating this process, the software robots are going to interact with multiple applications. This is what process done manually and process done, I mean, with the process RGA. So completely right here, that, that is what, 100% I cannot able to replace with the humans. So where, so if you implement one bot, right, so where I don't require three persons effort, that means a three FT. So that is what the standards you know from the robotic process automation. So about any tool, if you implement one robot successfully, so make sure that I don't want to re, I, I can, remove three persons from my team or from my process. So wherever we require manual process, so make sure that it is keep the 30% of the, what I'm trying to say from your team and remaining 70% you can remove from your operation. So this is called the basically uh, interaction like, you know, uh, how the you know, previous automation, how the previous automation or after automation is looking like this. So this is one of the important slides, like a benefits of the robotic process automation. The first and foremost thing is high quality. That means that, so I can, by using robotic process automation, I can achieve quality, 100% quality because the bot never do mistakes. So whatever we give in some instruction, see the same thing is the bot is going to perform the operations. So productivity boost, that means that obviously, <coughs> excuse me, I can able to achieve the productivity because right humans, how humans are doing the morning where right, they're doing very fast and you no know, at the time of you no know, before going to learn something or drowsy time they are doing very slow. Here the bot will do always hundred percentage. You know, they're going to perform the same operation at the same time so that we can see the productivity. The bot will not take rest, the bot will not have lunch, so the bot will not get sick. So obviously what will happen, I can see hundred percent productivity from the bot. So here I can able to, uh, what I'm trying to say, cost of saving I can able to do, that is what, if you implemented one bot, obviously what will happen, where I'm going to, where I'm, I'm not required three portions of support. But human will work only for nine hours per day or eight hours per day, but bot will work 24 by seven. So obviously what will happen, I can able to perform, you know, keep on performing the productivity and I, where, I'm came, or where, where, I'm, where I'm going to save the cost as well. This is called, we have a separate class called, you know, uh, how we are part, how we to save FT savings and all, which is going to part of uh, what I'm trying to say, SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle of the Robotic Process. So where we are going to discuss in detail about the, uh, how we are going to save, how we are going to, so where we are going to take examples of transactions, how much time for a transaction. So based on that calculation, we can save this FTV and this information I'm going to present with my stakeholders. So implementation, you know, fast implementation of the new process. That means that once you implement any, you know, uh, once you implemented one process, right, what have you implemented here, the same thing I can able, I can able to reuse that other process as well. That means that, so we have a different types of utilities. That means that Excel, Excel uh, writing, read, PDF for writing, read, and uh, mail sending information components. So we have different types of reusable components that can be used to plug into the other application as well so that where we can do the fast implementation. That is what one of the advantages. So capability increase the robot virtual workforce and focus on the staff on the customer service. The capability is nothing but what? So whatever the human does, the human, I mean, has capability, the robot also has the same capability which is going to perform the different types of operations. As I said, which is going to perform 20 by 24 by 7. Payback, right? Whatever the investor, return on investments. I'm investing some amounts, so is within three months I can able to get, I mean, pay back that amount because I'm removing the FTEs here. You don't want to pay that, I mean, pay uh, for them. So basically, you have to pay only license and uh, no, system maintenance and RPA maintenance. That's all. So obviously, remaining things you can save a lot within three months. Whatever you invested, you can get it back. 
so reusable uh, reuse process elements so I, I, that is what i said i have no whatever i have uh, uh, existing uh, process elements that I, i'm going to re reuse in other process as well so that i can implement the process so these are the best benefits of the robotic process automation in respect of the tool i'm just going to talk about the robotic process automation advantages or benefits any queries here fine so we have to see here what is the maturity of the robotic process automation so coming to the first point right desktop automation here we have a scripting we have workflow we have a macros we have a screen scraper so we have auto email this is called simple transaction data we are going to deal, deal this but coming to here right we are here actually we are robotic process automation where, where i'm going to perform the automation on the structured data or simple rule based application but i'm going to automate the different types of application like it's a windows or web or web i mean or i mean to say that here uh situation environment and sample oriented application where i'm going to process this one this is the next level of the automation process that is called autonomic process automation that means that so what is this here unstructured data or complex rule based information that means that unstructured is nothing but where we are going to read the data from the pdf file and we want to perform any complex rule based things so this is the next level of automation which we are going to completely focus on the robotic process automation so next one is continue that means that here on to artificial intelligence it's called cognitive automation on the fly right on the fly how we have how the human is thinking the same thing we are going to bring it here so that is called machine itself going to learn machine learning is one of the you know artificial intelligence concept where it is going to you know uh, what i'm trying to say on the fly uh, based on if you get any sudden pop-ups if you are implementing robotic process automation if you are getting any sudden sudden pop-ups from the web page where bot is going to stop because bot doesn't we did, we did not handle the scenario right bot doesn't know what had to do by the situation okay so obviously what will happen in this case bot is going to stop but in the cognitive and automation right so whatever they know in the, in the dynamically if you're getting any pop-up so bot is going to to understand this you know, anything is happened to me yes which is going to around to me so which is going to handle those scenarios so this is called cognitive automation so basically we are going to focus on only robotic process automation. So we are going to talk about factual data on the sample, how we are going to execute the sample rules and, and automation process. That is called the maturity of the robotic process automation. Any queries here? No, not from my side. Thanks, Bala. Yeah. So I'm just moving on to the next one. So this is one of the important slide. I just want to you know let you guys know uh, opportunities because we have wide range of applications in the market. Okay, uh, that is a uh, banking and finance, insurance, telecom, retail, manufacturing, and others. So we have different types of opportunities. You know, different types of you know a uh, lot of opportunities because they are succeeding in all the areas. My bots are running in their different types of environment. That means that web application I'm able to automate it. Windows application I'm able to automate it. I can able to automate the different types of application. They have succeeded and the bots are running in their environment. Now if we put to the especially the bot right running on the BPO sector. So what BPO sector they are daily doing the repetitive tasks. There is no dynamic operation. Their, their operations are all static. They're getting information from there. They are processing it. They are using sample rule, rules, and they are going to release it. So now, if you could see that uh, 100 percentage uh, BPO sector, now if you could see nowadays after 2025 20, or 20, no, by the time right, you will have only 30 percent, 20 to 30 percent in the BPO sector. The remaining 70 percentage, my virtual bots are going to perform the operations. So a lot of opportunities are waiting outside for us. So. Um, yeah, as early as possible so we can learn so that we'll be becoming an RTA developer or RTA manager or based on your experience. This is called wide range of, you no. Know, uh, I just given a small, you know, percentage here, like based on my standard, based on my, you know, uh, analyzed thing. So this is the, you know, opportunities outside. These are the areas you can go into the, we can able to do the automation. These are the opportunities outside. So this is very very important so this roadmap how we where we have to start because here i'm just starting okay at the end of the process so this should be i just want to replace me virtual bot the first and foremost thing what we have explored 
So identify the need of automation. We have to understand whether do we need the automation in this area or not. Okay. After automating the process, so what is the benefits we are going to do? So we have to identify the need of automation, whether we really need the automation here. If it is really need, that means that where we I can able to the automation output. So wherever you are automated, the automation output is reducing your fee under your time. I mean your job is simpler. So if you are not able to reduce the, I mean to say that if you're not removing the FTO over there, the whatever automation you're doing is, whatever investing is not, I mean, it's not useful, right? That is the first of it I just want to say here, identify the need of automation that we have to explore the, so whether we need to do an automation or not. The second thing is based on identification, we have to take the decision making. That means that right to process with the high ROI that is called written on investment and easy to implement. We have to take the decision making. So as RPA guys have to take the decision making because since we are going to process automation. So before that we have to think whether I'm investing to a thousand rupees, whether I get this you no know, five thousand or ten thousand rupees after a couple of months. That is called we have to think in so we have to we have to think on return on investment and we have to think whether it can be able to implement or not. We have to see that we have to understand directly I'll not go to automation, right? I will go to the you no know, operations floor. But I can see that I can able to automate the process or not. If you're able to automate the process, now simple rule based application, simple transaction they are doing, yes, I can able to do that operation. So we have to take the decision making. So what's the blueprint here? So how we are going to do, take the decision making here, we have to do an assessment on the process. That means that we have to do assessment. That means that, so I'm going to get the information from the no, that means that from standing uh, from the process experts. So the, they are going to do some some subject matter experts will be there. I'm going to requirement. Okay, I'm going to identify that one and I'm going to derive the ROI, you know, investment and destination. All the information based on the um, what I'm trying to say, the assessment we are going to perform on it and the same thing, right? So based on assessment, I'm going to finalize. Yes, I can able to do automate or not. After after deriving the estimation or after deriving the, all the information, I'm going to talk with my client. That means the stakeholder. Yes, I have gone through this your process. Yes, I can able to automate your process. After once you automating, now we have to invest this much of amount on this. After implementing this process, after a couple of years or a couple of months, so you, this is your ROI amount. So we have to in such a way we have to prepare the documents so before you present with the stakeholders. After presenting, right? So make sure that we have to do some proof of concept here. So what is the PO? I think this is one of the term. You might have know this proof of concept. So what basically proof of concept defines? So let's say example. You have some. You feeling some. This task is might be some tricky. So where we have to do some POC. So proof of concept. We have to do once you succeed this. Yes. Then obviously, what will happen? I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to commit with my. Uh, what I'm trying to say with my client yes i'm going to automate this process so once automation the process i'm going to push it into production environment it's called rollout we i'm going to i'm just roll out the to production end to end functionality i'm just going to push it after pushing right i just want to see i just want to measure the benefits that means that uh, whether it is able to perform 100 percent is not automated or not that means that whatever the task which i have been assigned to your board it is going to perform 100% quality and accuracy. Yes, you have to measure the benefits and obviously what will happen. So making robots part of the day-to-day -day operations. So even if it's automation success, right? So what will happen? I don't require the people to perform the operation, the same thing now automated. So finally, I'm going to replace with my, what I'm trying to say, with bots, I mean, with humans with my virtual robots here. Yeah. This is how your roadmap will be looking like this from starting to ending operations. Any queries here? No, I don't have anything over here. Okay. Others have any queries? No, Bala. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let's move on to this. We have to first thing is process understanding. We have to understand the process. Otherwise, right, if you are not understanding process, you will be struggle a lot into while automating the process. 
we have to identify we have to see we have to know know end to end process then only i can able to pro, uh, automate the process if you are not if you are if you are not understanding process properly definitely we cannot wait i mean you reach your deadlines and obviously you are you have to face a lot of you know problems while automating the process so this is one of the important thing is it is not a programming okay 100% is not a 100% is programming we have a drag and drop options we are going to drag and drop it we are going to connect with the different types of activities then i'm going to run my process so if you have no uh, background like you no know, c plus plus it is good enough to learn you no know, rpa tools any queries no Get? Uh, no, but uh, well, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. What about Kamla? Do you have any queries? Fine. So this is a basically right now. What we have discussed about uh, what I'm trying to say: only robotic process automation direction. Let's move on to the quickly and uh, let me complete way path interaction. So UI path is uh, one of the automation tool where we are going to automate the different types of process. So usually I can able to automate the process. So here, completely we are going to talk about the workflow. So here in UI path, right, we are going to completely talk about the workflow. What is the workflow basically? So workflow is a graphical representation of your business process. So very simple. If you could see right side, right, this is one of the workflow. So I'm just you know, constructing one table. I'm writing some information. I'm logging some information. So very simple. This is one workflow where I'm going to show it in the graphical representation. So by you seeing this, I can able to understand. Yes. So what is the process here? Simply we are such a way we are writing the name of the I mean activity for name name of the activities you know, properly so that I can understand what is this activity does. So basically, in UA path that we have different type of activities. So what is activity? Activity is a thing to perform some operation. That means that if you want to retrieve data from the UI, I have an act, I have an, one activity. If you want to push some data to the UI element, I have an activity. Because here I have to interact with the UI elements, right? So I have different types of activities that are available to interact with the UI. So we have write range. So what is write range? Is one of the activities which is going to write some data into the Excel sheet. So here log message. So what is the log message? And if you want to write any log messages. The particular file is yes, I can able to use in different types of activities. This is very simple. So whatever the rule base I have, right? I am going to show it into graphical representation that is called a workflow. So the, basically, uh, the main types of workflow supports are the sequence, sequence and flowcharts. So what is the sequences? So sequences are suitable for suitable linear process. So what is the linear process? It's a direct process. Is there? Simply, I'm just here. I'm constructing a table. I'm writing and I'm just coming back. So I don't want to take any decisions here. I don't want to go back to previous steps here. So such a way, right? I can go go ahead with sequence. So this is one sequence, sample sequence, which contain different types of activities. That means that smoothly go from one activity to another. That means that I am not taking any decisions here. I am not come back to the process again. So if it is a direct process, where I can use the sequences. But coming to real time, right? Most of the cases we have to use the flowcharts for better reading, the better understanding. Today you are developing application. Tomorrow, right? This will be understand by other persons also. So make sure that what I'm trying to say, you have to write the flowcharts properly so that here, which is suitable for more complex business. That means that I want to take you no know, uh, decision making. So based on some data, I want to take some decision. Based on the decision, if it is a true. I want to perform the same operations uh, repeatedly. Else, I want to come back, and I just want to come back from this loop. So, such, in this case, right, the flowchart is going to the best suitable for handling decision and take and you know, repeated task. And uh, if you want to go back to the process, also I can go back to the process by using decision making here. So, this is a basically right. The sequence is basically a workflow is nothing but a combination of your flowcharts and sequences. <clears throat> Any queries here? You may pop component. Yeah. Yes, I have a question over here. You yeah. said this uh, workflow will be created. It will be automatically created, or we have to cre create separately. Uh, we have for, to create separately. apart from the developer. 
apart from the development we have to prep, uh, uh, create separately so in the development only we are going to create this uh, i create this bala okay uh, that is i'll be tracking an element and i'll be doing this automatically yes. this workflow message will be captured or yes. separately i have to write this workflow yes. message very simple this workflow one of the area is nothing but i'll i'll introduce uh, ui path mm. <coughs> where you have workflow area in that workflow mm -hmm. area we have list of activities available i'm going to drag and drop you no know, like this if you want to drag the build ahead table activity i can able to drag and drop here and we can change the properties of this one that's all so we have one concept called recording concept so by using recording automatically we can construct the uh, sequences that is also feasible so if you want to manually okay. create a sequence uh, you can create the workflow i can able to create manually or if you want to create you know um, we have to create dynamically that means that how i'm just i'm just record the user user actions i'm just opening an application picking some action and selecting particular element and just coming out all this information right so based on your clicking obviously background it is creating with activities and it's come up with some sequence that is called recording sequence okay that is also possible okay sure okay uh, if hmm. i'm going through in live demo i think i it would be much clear we'll yes. see yes yes okay yes. okay once i complete this component so that i'll dive to more to the live demo okay okay so so basically UI path components majorly we have three types of components available in UI path. The first one is UI path studio, UI path robot and UI path orchestrator. So basically what is UI path studio? So what basically UI path studio? That is called integrated development environment where I'm going to automate the process in the form of visible, visible, visible diagrams. Okay. Where I'm going to design it, where I'm going to code it, where I'm going to run it, where I'm going to publish it. So what is the publish? After automating the process, right, I'm going to publish that, I mean to say that I'm going to push it into my orchestrator here as a nugget package. So we'll discuss what is the nugget package in upcoming sessions. So entire package, I'm just converting entire process into one package, this package, I'm going to push it into orchestrator. So what is basically orchestrator? It is a web application where we are going to create the robots, create the process. For whatever you deploying package, right? For that, I'm going to create the process like, where I'm going to give some name, like if you want to perform invoices, give the invoice number, or if you want to perform true information, give the true information. So like that, create the process. And one more thing, assets. So what is asset here? The assets is very important thing is the configurations part. Just the example, we have a database connection string, okay? Where I'm going to use the right, I mean, where I'm going to use it for uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, reporting purpose, right? So we have a database connection string. I think it is very important to interact with your database. Okay. So which contain what is the connection name? What, is, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, what is the database name? What is the um, server name? What is username and password? This information, right? If you are working with your local mission, so what will happen where the username is different, password is different, and server name is different. The same code, you are going to push it into your environment or cloud production environment where the server's names are different and IDs and username and password are different. This information, I should not hard code it. I should not hard code into my UiPath Studio. So this information, I want to push it into assets from the assets. So I can enable this. Assets are nothing but like environment variables or it is a configuration variable. So I can where the data value is very from different to different environments. I just assets. So what is the queue? The queue is nothing but just like inventory where we are getting the input where you are, the bot is going to read the input from the queue. Okay. So let's say example if I am to perform invoices, all the invoices we have to push it to the queue. So from queue and bot is going to pick it and is going to perform it, is going to send the results. That is called queue. So what is the schedule here? The schedule is nothing but I'm going to schedule what I'm trying to say. Uh, uh, I have different types of process available in my orchestrator. So I want to run the all these you know uh, process parallelly. So I can schedule the process and I, I, for that process, I'm going to assign the bots. So obviously what will happen whenever the time triggers, the process is going to kick start and bot, bots are going to perform on the process. So what is the jobs here? Jobs, if you want to run them manually, yes, I can able to run the job. That means that I'm selecting the particular process, I'm selecting the particular robot, I kick start, obviously what will happen, your bot is going to perform on the process. So log is also one of the important things here logs or nothing but so whatever the writing log message so i have shown you write one log message so here log message is one of you know uh, what i'm trying to say it is uh, 
it is one of the uh, what I'm trying to say it is one of the uh, debugging mechanism in your uh, uh, UiPath Studio. So by using that, I can able to what are the logs you have written on your UiPath Studio. The same log I can able to see in the orchestrator. Fine. Let's see quickly. Uh, what I'm trying to say. See one real time example. So this is one of the application, right? If you want to extract the data from here, because I want to extract this data from the, this grid and I want to push it into an Excel sheet. Okay, let's quickly work on this. So this is my UiPath Studio that I have written one flowchart here. Here I have a list of activities that are available. I have a list of activities that are available. All these activities, okay, by using these activities, I have constructed flowchart here. Okay, let me quickly run this. And see the output of this. Here we have two types of bots that are available. That is nothing but front office robot and back office robot. So what is a front office robot? The front office robot is nothing but the robot which is going to run from your local machine, where your developer machine. Now my front office robot is going to work. So what is the back office? The back office robots are running from your orchestrator. So where it is going to process, I mean, uh, operations. So it's called different types of bots are available in UA for Studio. Maybe it will take some time because um, the system configuration is a bit low. By the time you have any queries? No, not from my side. No questions, uh, Mohan. Okay, let me it will be done extracted. So let me quickly go back to the physical part. So this is my physical part. So here I'm writing the I'm on extensive report, right? So this report I'm just opening. Here the board is what is going to perform, right? It is extracting the data from this column row wise and is going to push it into an Excel sheet. <laughs> Let me open orchestrator also and see and show you what is how you process is making noise.
I'm extracting right I'm just creating the columns here by, by using the build data table concept so I'm just extracting data from this table and finally I'm going to push it into I'm finally going to push it into this one here this is how you are um, what I'm trying to say the data is going to extract from the data. any queries here Excuse me. Following it. Yes, I don't have any query over here. Just yeah, read the, the oral reading. demo with this. Yes. What happens? Sorry? We'll just see how it works now. Okay. Okay. So here, right? So this is a building that first of all I just want to build one data table. So when you double click this one, this is one uh, act. Activity. So by using the activity, I'm just constructing the columns here. <clears throat> here, see, I'm just creating column, extensify description amount. So I just constructed one table here. Come back to here. So this is very important thing: scrapping data. Here, everything is. I think you know selector, right? The selector is nothing but. If you want to interact with this element, I need this particular element selector. So I'm just I'm just creating a dynamic selectors concept here. I'm just writing the data from here, and I'm going to um, form dynamic selectors, which we'll discuss in upcoming sessions, like how we have to create the dynamic selectors. The selector is nothing but I want to if you want to retrieve the particular element, that element selector will be at the background, like now. While you're creating HTML design or something, right? Where you are going to give the idea of the particular new element. So you are going to the classes and you are going to add in the properties, right? All the information I can I can able to extract, I can I will get like this. You could see here, right? The selector will be looking like this. Okay. So for this one, I'm just creating the dynamic selector. So by so by using the get text activity, I'm just receiving this one. And uh, finally, what I'm doing here. I'm going to push it into that particular data table. Whatever we create data table, right? I'm just going to push the data data into this data row. So what will happen after completing my, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say, the rows? Finally, I'm going to export it into Excel. How we are doing this? So I have expense report. I'm just passing the data table to export a sheet. Obviously, what will happen? Whatever the data is present in the Excel sheet, I mean data table, which is going to push it into. Uh, what I'm trying to say into Excel sheet. Here I don't want to write any code here. The simple steps and just getting the things and configuring and then just running the things. Any queries, Bala, here? Bala, with me? Uh, no, no, I don't have any queries over here. Uh, actually, uh, it seems it works fine now. Uh, and I have a doubt over here in the web-based application alone. Uh, I think and in the web-based application and in the SAP automations, um, how would you be? How will you retrieve the values from the SAP? That is retrieve in sense. Uh, there are some cases which would be drag and drop like that. How would you perform the such kind of things? Yes, you uh, no, we have activity side. Right? It's very simple. So if it is a web, web, web application, right? If you want to interact with any information from the UI, so we have a different types of activity. From there, I can able to extract the data. Very simple. If you have any selector, if I'm able to find the selector particular screen, yes, definitely I can able to extract the data. Actually, I'm just okay. opening this. Uh, I'm just opening on a web application. I mean, a browser. Okay. So okay. where how we are going to interact like Google, let me open Google. 
let me create i'm just creating one sequence here mm. So this sequence right i'm just going to name test to create this all the test this one test one and let's do it Now, what an activity like I just if you want to push some data into the Google search, okay, very simple. Okay. Uh, I just we have an activity called type into <coughs> just drag and drop here, okay. Then click on the indicator on the screen. Okay, let me open Google first of all. Right. Okay. Now go back to the UA part, the so indicator on the screen. So where you want to push the data, see because autom automatically I'm able to select in the particular UA elements. Okay. If you want to extract okay. this data, I can able to do this. If you want to push the data, so I'm selecting and just clicking on it. Okay. Once you click here, so obviously it is going to come up with one select card. It means that if you're trying to push into the particular element to make sure that I need some uh, selector, right? This is my selector. It automatically detects it as in text box or something. However, however it yes. doesn't. See here. It okay. automatically, if the input is nothing but what? It is the type of, if you see if you push, you type is input, it is the text okay. box, right? So which is going to get this select card from the uh, no, UI element. So here I just enter something like here UI path. So if you want to enter the text on this particular screen, if you save this, so just if you run this, automatically what will happen? It's going to enter some data here because I'm not entering. I'm just uh, observing here. My bot is started here, it's nothing here, and type it and it's coming out. That's taken six seconds time. Now if you go and see it here, right? So your bot has been typed in the on the screen. So this is how we are going okay. to interact with the web application. Whatever the application is, the web or windows or SAP, this is how we are going to interact with the applications. Okay, sure. So last topic is this orchestrator. So I think uh, uh, they have a different about to get about process jobs so assets what do you discuss all the you know topics are available here so just i'm just uh, i just want to show you know uh, after state here that's all these are your look your i mean to say that your look and look and feel will be looking i mean looking like this so we'll discuss each and every you know individual topic in upcoming session so how we are create a board and how to create a process okay create a actually Oh, sorry for the sorry for interrupting. Uh, what about the virtual machines which you have been linked would be uh, shown in this orchestrator, right? Yes, exactly. Whatever the, all the virtual machines, I'm just going to you know creating like this. From here, I'm going to kick it off. Okay. It shows how long it has been in offline, our state is connected or disconnected. All this has been shown in this orchestra, right? Exactly. Okay, sure. Actually, this was an awesome session. Thanks for Thank your you. brief introduction, and, uh, and it would be useful. I I would talk to this 
Manigandan or something. I'm not sure with this name. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll talk with I'll talk to him and I'll get back to you. And I would like to join the courses. I'll get back to you. Thanks, okay. Bala. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Kamla Kar, do you have any queries? Kamla Kar and Venkat. So others we can go to wind up. Yeah, this session is this Kamala. The session is very good. I have few queries because I don't know what is the automation for stuff. Uh, your voice is breaking. Your voice is breaking, Kamala. Your voice is breaking, Kamala. Sir. Hello. No, no, the voice is not completely breaking now. Yeah, okay, no problem. No, okay, now I'm able. From technical problem here. It was. Now, issue. now I'm able to hear you. Go ahead, go ahead. Come back. Yes, I want to compare the automation mm -hmm. process with uh, normal schedulers and. Um, Windows services. Yes. Suppose I have I'm working with a tough reports. 